Have you ever wondered how crackers manage to unlock games that are supposed to be locked behind tight security? Today we'll break it down in simple terms and use some famous examples along the way. To start, think of a game as a treasure chest and DRM, or digital rights management, as the lock keeping it secure. When you buy a game legally, the DRM checks for a key like a license file or online verification. If the key is missing or invalid, the lock stays shut and the game won't launch. For example, Grand Theft Auto V uses Rockstar's Social Club DRM to verify your ownership, requiring you to log into their servers before you can play. Crackers see the DRM as a challenge. Their job is to figure out how the lock works and either break it or make a fake key. Here's how they do it. First, they dig into the game files using special tools called debuggers. These tools allow them to observe how the game's code runs in real time. They're specifically looking for the part of the code that performs the DRM check. Think of it like finding the security guard in a building. Once they find this check, they analyze how it works. DRM usually asks something like, is this key valid? If the answer is yes, the game starts. If it's no, the game shuts down. Crackers carefully study this process to understand how the game verifies the key. When they understand the check, they modify the game code to bypass it. For example, with Far Cry 5, Crackers removed the DRM entirely so the game no longer performed the key verification. With The Sims 4, they altered the code so it always said, yes, the key is valid, even when it wasn't. And for more complex systems like FIFA 23, they created an emulator, a fake DRM system that tricks the game into thinking everything is in order. To pull this off, crackers use tools like hex editors to modify game files, debuggers to monitor code execution, and memory scanners to specific instructions in the game's memory. These tools allow them to tinker with the game's code until they've bypassed the DRM. But cracking isn't as easy as it sounds. Developers are constantly updating DRM to make cracking harder. Some games, like Resident Evil Village, use layered DRM systems, both Capcom's own DRM and de novo anti-tamper technology. Crackers have to bypass each layer, which takes significant time and effort. Another challenge is encryption. Modern DRM often scrambles the game's code, making it unreadable until the game is running. Crackers must first decrypt this code before they can analyze it. For example, de novo, a popular DRM system, is infamous for its anti-tamper technology that integrates deeply into a game's performance. It even introduces checks during gameplay to make sure no modifications have been made. Crackers working on Assassin's Creed Origins had to deal with these checks and ensure their changes didn't crash the game or cause performance issues. Even when a crack is successful, there's still the issue of testing. Crackers need to ensure the game runs smoothly after their modifications. Any bugs or glitches might require them to go back and tweak their code, which can take weeks or even months. This is why games with strong DRM, like Red Dead Redemption 2, often remain uncracked for long periods after release. Once the DRM is bypassed, crackers test the game thoroughly and package the cracked version for distribution. You'll often see these on torrent sites tagged with the names of the cracking groups responsible, like Codex. Now that we have explained the principle of cracking games, let's go into a little more detail. I will try as much as possible to make it understandable to everyone. In modern games, encryption is used to protect the most sensitive parts of the code. This makes it much harder for crackers to manipulate the game or bypass the DRM. But how does encryption in game code work? And what does it look like? Let's say our original code is key code 1, 2 to 3. This is the code we want to keep safe. Now we'll use a simple encryption method to transform it. One of the easiest ways to encrypt data is using a Caesar cipher. This method shifts each character by a certain number of positions in the alphabet. For our example, we'll shift each character by three positions. Here's how it works. The letter K shifts to N, and E shifts to H, Y shifts to B. We continue doing this with all letters and numbers, and our encrypted code is this. And let's imagine we have a piece of game code that has been encrypted. It might look something like this when it's encrypted in memory or within the game's files. The point of encryption turning readable, usable data into something unrecognizable. So even if someone tries to look at it, it's impossible to understand without the key to decrypt it. So how would a cracker approach this? 
The first step is finding where the encryption is happening. Crackers use debuggers or disassemblers, such as OLIDAG or IDA Pro, to reverse engineer the game's executable file and identify where encrypted data is stored. They would look for places in the code that deal with things like license verification or security checks, which might include encrypted data. This is often the first place they look, because DRM systems often rely on encrypted keys or data checks. For instance, the game may use encryption to store the license key, and the cracker needs to find how the game accesses and decrypts this key before allowing the game to run. Once the cracker finds where the data is encrypted, they need to figure out what kind of encryption is used. Games could use basic XOR encryption, A's encryption, or more advanced methods. Let's say the game uses A's encryption, a very strong encryption algorithm often used in modern applications, including games. In the game code, it might look something like this when the data is being encrypted where ABC123 is the license key, and a secret key is a random encryption key only known to the game's developer. If the cracker can find the secret key or any weak points in the encryption system, they can attempt to decrypt the data. A's encryption is very difficult to break without the key, but let's simplify it for the example. Imagine the game developer made a small mistake in the way they stored the encryption key. It might be possible to extract it from memory if the cracker can find where the encryption key is loaded while the game is running. Once the cracker has the encryption key, they can decrypt the data, which might reveal something like. At this point, the cracker has successfully retrieved the license key and can use it to activate the game. In reality, cracking a game with A's encryption, or any strong encryption, is much harder than this. Advanced protections are often put in place like key obfuscation or anti-debugging techniques, to prevent crackers from easily extracting the key. For example, the game might encrypt the encryption key itself, making it harder to find. The game could use anti-debugging techniques, which make it difficult for crackers to run debuggers and analyze the code without getting detected. Dynamic encryption might be used, meaning the encryption key changes every time the game is run, further complicating the cracking process. This is why modern games can take so long to crack. It's not just about brute forcing an encrypted string, it's about bypassing or defeating multiple layers of protection. Encryption is a major hurdle for crackers, and it's one of the primary reasons why some games remain uncracked for so long. But even with powerful encryption like A's, it all comes down to finding vulnerabilities or flaws in the game's code. Once those vulnerabilities are found, crackers can often use a mix of tools like debuggers, disassemblers, and memory editors to reverse engineer the encrypted data and gain access to the game. The world of game cracking is a constant game of cat and mouse where developers work to protect their games and crackers try to find clever ways to bypass those protections. While encryption is a tough wall to break, it's not impossible. And as long as there are vulnerabilities, crackers will continue to find ways around them. While cracking games can be fascinating from a technical perspective, it's important to understand the broader implications. Cracking hurts developers, especially smaller indie teams who rely on every cell to stay afloat. For instance, piracy of Stardew Valley, a game made by a single developer, meant lost revenue that could have gone toward new updates or future projects. At the same time, some argue that DRM itself creates issues for paying customers, like performance hits or restrictions on ownership. Regardless of where you stand, cracking is a mix of skill technology and ethics a puzzle with real-world consequences. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. And if you want to learn more about how games are made, stay tuned for our next video.